Hi guys, Brian from the gas station again, back here with another review. Uh, today what I have for you is the venerable and very popular uh, Canon Canonet QL17G3. Um, this is a, definitely a really nice camera. Uh, this is actually my second one. Um, I got rid of my, my first one, uh, basically traded it in for other stuff. I picked this one up for five bucks. Um, so glad to have it back again in the collection. Um, a camera I really do like, uh, not a camera I probably have used as much as I should. Um, now that I have it again, I'll probably take it out and shoot it some more. Um, but I am fairly well familiar with this uh, this camera. I don't know 100% of everything about it, I'm sure. I'll omit something, but you guys will let me know, and we can discuss that in the uh, in the comments below. But I'll, I'm going to do as you know comprehensive a review as I can, and uh, give you as much information as possible. So, anyway, here it is, the Canon QL17 G3. Uh, this is uh, the uh, the newer version of the camera. They came out with just the QL17, and then they, I don't know if there was a G1, G2, but it, then they came out with the G3. Uh, the difference between the G3, I don't know, but um, as far as I can tell, there's not, not a whole huge lot of difference between them. Um, this camera is very interesting in the fact that it's a shutter priority camera, and it does work in shutter priority mode. Uh, so basically what happens is you set your aperture setting right here to A, uh, which is your automatic mode, and then you set your shutter speed right here. Um, and it'll match whatever uh, it feels is the appropriate f-stop to uh, that shutter speed. Um, so, you know, if I set this to 500th of a second, wind it on, it's going to give me, well, let's see, I'll look at the viewfinder here. Oh, 500 is a little too high in this light. Um, let's see if I set it down to, let's say, okay, there we go. Um, a 60th of a second, it's going to give me f5.6. So there's a meter inside or a, 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 a diagram on the right side of the viewfinder um, that is going to give you uh, that information of what your f stop is. So if you want, you know, greater or less uh, depth of field, you can adjust your shutter speed to adjust your f-stop. Um, if you want to capture motion at a little higher speed, you set you know, your, uh, your shutter speed to uh, 2 50th and it's going to adjust your f-stop to match. So that's essentially what your shutter priority does. It gives you all of that information. Um, it has a really nice, and this I wish most cameras had this, was this little focusing tab right here and it's a very short throw but it's very accurate focusing. Um, this camera has a uh, 40 millimeter 1.7 uh, uh, lens. This lens is, is, is fast, it's sharp, it's actually a really nice lens. Um, uh, I like it a lot. I, I went out, um, it was about a year ago, a year or two ago maybe, to uh, one of the, you know, my daughter's uh, field day events and uh, just got some really great sharp photos out of this. Uh, really great black and white photography, good metering and stuff like that. Um, it is a battery operated camera, although you can use it in manual mode. You can switch uh, and do your own metering from, you know, let's say if it's uh, set, you know, your uh, your f-stop, your shutter speed there, and then you can adjust your f-stop to match. It's stopless, so you can get all those in-between points between f1.7 and f16, uh, which is kind of nice, and then it just clicks into aperture mode. Um, you also, it does have a, a, a scale here for focusing so if you want to do scale focusing you can do that zone focusing or, or, or fo you know pre pre focusing is difficult with this camera um, or with any shutter priority camera because it's changing your depth of field constantly so you know I would you know I would manually meter and if you wanted to do that and if you're doing like street photography and stuff like that um, if you're looking to stop motion that's great you can do that but you're gonna be losing depth of field so the zone focus is, is difficult with this um, no, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's much, much more difficult. Um, uh, it, it is, uh, it's got a nice little uh, winder here, so uh, it winds on, again, a short throw on that. And the shutter is a, is a little heavier than I care for, um, but it's really not bad. You're not going to get a, really any camera shake out of it, per se. Uh, it's got a nice short throw on the, uh, uh, on the winder. Uh, right next to your winder is your film counter, which is nice. You do have a hot shoe. And I believe the flash you can get for this is a TTL flash, so it, it will uh, 
it, it will um, uh, you know sync sync itself to and give you the appropriate flash output uh, based on your exposure settings. So that so that's nice. Um, there is this metering eye right here. So if you put filters on the camera, it's going to accommodate whatever filters are on there. Uh, Etc. A little self timer switch right there, and then you have uh, it's a copal shutter, so it will uh, sync at all flash speeds. Um, so um, this little dial here, uh, you know, again is your shutter speed, but they sort of like give you uh, based on what your uh, what your ISO is is you can set your shutter speed based on here. So if you're indoors, uh, cloudy outside, or a big sunny day, uh, you can uh, adjust adjust your uh, your shutter speed to match so basically anything closer this way is going to be uh, closer to the outside anything going further this way is going to be closer to the inside which gives you s slower shutter speeds so less light uh, longer shutter speeds you know uh, it's gonna it's gonna take um, you know, you're gonna want to let more light into the camera um, again, focus tab is really nice. Uh, there is a bulb mode on this. You, you activate that by pushing in this little uh, switch here and you can put the camera into bulb. Um, and then you have your, again, your shutter speeds on top. Um, two uh, fairly sturdy strap plugs on the side. Um, there's also a uh, PC port right here, which is covered by that nice little flap. So you just pull that down, plug your PC port right into it. Battery check button on the back here. So you can press that. Um, and um, let me see what else is there. It is battery operated. It takes the uh, the 625 battery. Um, it, it is not an auto compensating uh, camera for the voltage. This normally takes 1.3 volt. I think it's 1.3 volt battery. These are 1.5s. So you are going to have a little bit of variance in your exposure. Um, I do find with standard films like portrait and stuff like that, and most of the modern films, you have enough latitude in your processing to you know if you you know, do a hybrid workflow or whatever you're going to be able to scan in your your negatives and you're going to be able to just you know uh adjust that output and i think you're looking at probably one or two stops uh variants um because of the voltage with the metering and stuff like that some people claim much higher i don't know um i've had pretty good results with the canon so um i'm, I'm not going to say one way or the other your mileage will vary um, on the back of the camera here, it shows, has a little window um, where that's red that shows that the uh, shutter is cocked and ready to fire. And then when you press that, it goes white again. So if it's red, it's saying, hey buddy, uh, don't mess around with the shutter unless you want to take a picture. And then it goes white again. This also, this little red, white, striped candy cane kind of thing, uh, shows when you have film in here, shows that starts moving. It shows that the film is in transport. Uh, so it lets you know if, if your, your film is actually spooling or not. Um, it's kind of a nice little feature. Uh, in order to gain access to the uh, to the film compartment, you lift the uh, rewind lever up, and that will pop open the back. My camera here does need seals, so um, don't take this as like a classic example of the camera. It does need seals. Uh, you know, almost every QL17 you run into is going to need it unless you're going to spend a lot of money on one that's already been CLA'd. But this, the QL stands for the Quick Load System. So you put your film in here spool it over, the tip goes to the orange line right there, and then you just basically close up the camera and it locks everything into the uh, uh, the film sprockets. Uh, so yeah, so, so that works pretty well. It's actually a pretty nice system. Uh, this camera, you know, again, I need to go through, but for five bucks, I'm really not complaining. Uh, I haven't put any rolls through this particular camera, but I have uh, run a lot a fair amount actually through my uh, through my other just not as many as I should I probably really should be working with this camera more it really is a great fun camera um, it is very small it's a little a little small for me um, for a film camera I figure if we're going to take out a film camera I might as well take out something a little bit more substantial and bigger but you know if you want to keep something smaller with you it's not a pocket camera it's not a big camera I, I'm kind of almost of the mind you know carry a bigger camera if you're going to be carrying a camera out but it, I don't know, it's whatever whatever your taste is, I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, I'm a big guy, big hands, but I'm not certainly not complaining about the camera or saying it's any kind of a flaw. It's just, it, it, it's not the most comfortable camera for me, but I, I do like it. Um, it does have a, a, a decent viewfinder. This one is a little bit dim. Uh, apparently they're easy to clean. I've never cleaned one, um, but uh, there's a lot of instructions on the web with this camera, and a lot of people have played with this camera and really enjoyed it. 
um, you know, repairing them and stuff like that. Uh, there is a, uh, a little rangefinder patch uh, that lines up here and the parallax does adjust with the focus. So those frame lines, it, as you move closer or forward, depending upon where your subject is, the parallax lines will move within the viewfinder, which is very nice and uh, very, uh, what I would consider to be a, a quality feature of the camera. Um, let me see, 35 millimeter film, obviously hot shoe, we talked about that. Um, like I said, overall a very good quality camera, decent build quality, um, definitely better build quality than the Yashica um, GSNs, um, although I really like the Yashikas. I, I think the build quality of this is better. I like the size better of the Yashica. A lot of people complain the Yashica is too big. I doesn't bother me at all. I like to feel a camera. I think it makes the little camera a little bit steadier in your hand. But again, your mileage may vary. I'm just kind of showing you guys what's up. So anyway, threaded uh, 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 shutter button so you can put in your, your uh, plunger release and all that stuff. Um, you know, two strap lugs. I don't know. You got yourself a decent camera here, guys. Um, a lot of people like the, the QL17 G3. A very, very popular camera. You can't go wrong with it. I, if you get one, decent deal. Pick one up. I know they're selling for outrageous prices some places. Uh, don't go crazy. You know, be patient. There's a ton of these cameras out there. Um, you know, I, I, I would take your time and, uh, and wait for one that you want. Um, ISO, let's see if I can go, goes up to 800, which is nice. You can put your 800 speed film in here and goes down to 25. So, anyway, I think I've, this is just a quick and dirty uh, review of the QL17. Um, but if you want to, again, a great camera to get in on that rangefinder experience, if you're interested in that, I am. It's a big thing for me, but again, I don't discriminate. I like everything. SLRs, rangefinders, you name it. I tend to be a little bit more of a rangefinder guy, but that's just me. So, um, I'm a bit of a, a nostalgic guy anyway, so, and I find a lot of nostalgia with the, the older rangefinder stuff, and I really like not having the, uh, the viewfinder blackout when I take the picture. I can continue to see what's going on, and I like a little bit of the surprise seeing that the picture comes out just a little bit differently than I composed it. So, uh, for professional work or whatever, you know, that may bother you, but um, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm not going to wax on about rangefinders, but this is a good one if you're interested. Uh, again, can Canon at QL17 G3. I think you still get the same approximate camera with the QL17. Uh, the G3s just go for a bit more money. Um, but the QL is for the quick load, and the G3 is because it's good times three. I don't know. Anyway, that's about it, guys. Brian, the gas station. Thanks for watching, uh, and more videos to come. Thank you.